turns out that many chemical reactions are reversible. We can see here that we have nitrogen plus hydrogen turns into uh, ammonia. And if, it, if we read that equation from left to right, we put an arrow to the right. But we can also recognize that the product, NH3, can decompose back into its elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. So let's get an idea of, uh, uh, let's try to practice a little bit. We have an equilibrium reaction here, SO2 plus O2 in a equilibrium, meaning forward reaction and reverse reaction is happening, uh, turning into SO3. The forward reaction is reading this left to right. SO2 plus O2 turns into SO3. But the reverse reaction, you think about the products now as the reactants. SO3 turning into SO2 plus O2. Let's try, um, a, let's take, try looking at another one. Here we've got an equilibrium of ammonium chloride dissolving into its component ions of ammonia and chloride. The forward reaction is reading it left to right, ammonium chloride, dissolving into ammonium and chloride. But the reverse reaction, we see that ammonium and chloride are crystallizing back into the ammonium chloride solid. So that's how you can uh, easily look at an equation and tell me what the forward and the reverse reaction is. So when the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate, the reaction is said to be in equilibrium, and a two-way arrow is used. Now at equilibrium, um, some reactants and some products are present in the equilibrium system at any given time. Equilibrium does not mean that the amount or concentration of reactants is equal to the amount or concentration of products. Equilibrium means that the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate. If an equilibrium, however, is subjected to a stress, the system will react in such a way as to reduce the stress. It'll do something to counteract the stress. This is called Le Chatelier's principle. A stress is a change that leads to a disturbance in the equilibrium either from adding reactants or products, or a change in temperature or pressure. A uh, change in pressure is only going to impact substances that are in the gas phase. Things that are, um, uh, substances that are either solid, liquid, or aqueous are unaffected at all by pressure. So to counteract that stress, the equilibrium is gonna do one of two things. It will either increase the rate of the forward reaction, we say it shifts to the right, which means it makes more products, or it's going to increase the rate of the reverse reaction, we say that that shifts to the left because it makes reactants on the left side of the equation until a new equilibrium is reached. Getting idea to the getting used to the idea of shifting an equilibrium. Um, let's say we have an equilibrium: nitrogen plus ammonia plus hydrogen turns into ammonia, and for some reason there's a stress that causes this to shift to the right. What that means is it will produce more ammonia, and it will produce less of your reactants: nitrogen and hydrogen. As it shifts to the right, you're making more products and you're using up some of the reactants in that process. And so the balance is that now you have more products than you did reactants. If we say that the sh some stress happens and it causes a shift to the left, what that means is that'll produce more of the things that are on the left side of the arrow, in this case, water, and it will produce less of the things that are on the right side of the arrow. So shift to the left is going to increase reactants and it will decrease products. A couple more examples here. Shifting to the left. Anything to the left side of the arrow is what we will be producing more of. Anything on the right side of the arrow is what we'll be using up and therefore producing less. Shifting this next equation to the right, 
we will be making more MgO, producing less Mg and O2. Right. So these are all um, when we get when you'll start to hear oh the equilibrium is going to shift right or left as a response to a stress. Uh, we're really talking about shifting to the right, producing products. Shifting to the left is producing more reactants. So what? How can we eat in this next reaction? get this equilibrium to produce more calcium carbonate. Okay. We need to do something that will cause this equilibrium to shift left. If you want, in this next reaction, if you want to produce more hydrogen and oxygen, you are also going to shift this reaction to the left. Um, so we'll have to figure out what those stresses are that can cause a tip in the equilibrium one way or another. To do this, we're going to look at a chemical equilibrium uh, in a series of videos, uh, and it's going to involve two complex ions of cobalt. The cation, which is this cobalt with six waters attached, is a plus two cation, and it is pink. And the other form of this cobalt um, complex ion is cobalt chloride minus two, so it's an anion. And when it's in this form, it is blue colored. Take note of the reversible reaction. So this reaction can move to the right or the reaction can move to the left. And we can also take note that there are chloride ions. Uh, presumably this is all happening in water so that we can have ions, three chloride ions floating around. But that's going to act as a reactant because it's written on the left side. And we've got water as a product written on the right side. So we're going to make use of those to help us push the equilibrium uh, to make more products or to make more reactants. So let's see what we can, how we can do this. So looking at this equilibrium system in the test tube, right? It came from this stock bottle, but we have a lot tiny little bit in this test tube. You can pretty much tell which ion is present in greater quantity, right? It is the blue cobalt chloride ion. But does that mean that the cobalt chloride is, not, is the only type of cobalt ion present? It does not. In any equilibrium, you are going to have some of the reactants present and some of the products present. Uh, the tipping point is once you get more of the blue ion present, the solution is going to start to look more blue. And once the solution starts to look more pink, um, you're going to see that we have more of the reactants present, more of this ion present. And then somewhere in between, potentially, uh, maybe there's more equal amount or, or certainly a more blended amount. So uh, when we take a look at the different stresses we can do, um, we're going to focus on the first few demonstrations are going to focus on uh, manipulating the concentration of either the reactants or products. So either adding or removing reactants or products. So demonstration one in this video, the stress is going to be adding water. Okay. So when we add water to this equilibrium system down here, and um, there's already water in this test tube, if we add more water, the question I'm asking you is, will we be adding more reactant or product to the equilibrium system? Well, adding water, find it in, this, in the equilibrium reaction. You're adding a product. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happens. As we add water, we can see that it turns the solution pink, and when we mix the test tube, it turns completely pink. So what we say is, um, what is the color change after the water is added? In pink. Which complex ion is favored by the addition of water? And what we mean by favored is which complex ion was produced in greater quantity compared to previously. That would be the cobalt hexafluoro, uh, hexa, hexahydrate pink cation. We say that this is a shift to the left because all of a sudden it made more reactants, which are on the left side of the equation. And from that, we can say that um, reactants are favored, reactants are produced. So the question is why? Well, 
think about what the stress was. The stress was addition of a product. The relief of that, because that's what Le Chatelier um, seeks to do, the, the equilibrium will try to reduce the effect of the stress. So addition of product, the relief is going to be somehow to, to reduce product. And what it will then do is it will use up product to, and it ends up making reactions. So adding product, the reaction will start uh, because of collision theory. All of a sudden you got more, more products, um, adding more, more water. That's going to increase the chance of collisions here. That's going to shift to the left and you're going to get more of the things on the, on the left. You're going to get uh, more reactants made. All right, let's take a look at the second demonstration. Again, um, the same general category. We're changing the concentration of reactants or products. Uh, this time we're going to add hydrochloric acid, which contains aqueous chloride ions. Okay, and so my question to you is, will we be adding a reactant or a product? And the answer here is we're adding a reactant because hydrochloric acid is just hydrogen ions and chloride ions, so we're adding this to the equilibrium system. So let's see what happens when we add, and we're going to add the hydrochloric acid to a test tube that contains more product, that's the blue one, and we're going to add some acid to the second test tube, which has more reactants present than product. And you can see here that adding this reactant in either test tube, it's pushing the equilibrium to the right. What that means is that it's just trying to make more product. It's not, it's becoming more blue uh, because we added the reactant. So writing this down, what is the color change after the HCl is added? Well, it, it definitely stayed blue or turned blue. We say that the cobalt chloride ion was favored or produced. We say that this is a shift to the right because we made things that we made the ion that is on the product side. And we therefore say that products are favored. So the stress, what was the stress? We added a reactant. The relief is to reduce reactant, right? If you're going to add reactants, what's going to happen? More collisions are going to happen uh, between the cobalt and the chloride. And that's going to make more product. So the relief is to reduce the amount of reactants in its quest to make products. So, um, and that's really all because of collision theory. You add more stuff, um, more reactants, the, they're going to bump into each other and they're going to react. All right, let's take a look at demonstration number three. Again, we are still in the general category of changing the concentration of reactants or products. This time, we're going to do something different. We're going to add acetone, which is not one of these four things in the equation. But what acetone does, it will surround the water molecules, it binds the water molecules, and effectively removes the water molecules from the reaction. So by adding acetone, which binds water, making it unavailable, we are essentially removing product from the equilibrium system. Let's see what happens when we add that acetone. We're going to add it to both a blue test tube and a pink test tube. Uh, and hopefully we're going to see that the color is going to shift either both the blue or both the pink. And we've added it to the, the blue test tube, and now we've just added it to the pink test tube, and both turned blue. So the idea here is the color change was blue, which means we favored the cobalt chloride ion. We say this is a shift to the right because we made product, and we say that the products are favored. But the question is why? Well, think of this way. The stress was to remove a product, right? Remove a product. And so what happens is to replace that product that was removed, the reactants will um, react more and as a consequence will make products that will essentially replace the products that were removed. So when you remove a product, the shift is 
to make more product. Demonstration number four. This is the last one in the category of changing the concentration of reactants or products. What we're going to do now is we're going to add silver nitrate. Now silver and nitrate are not in this equation, but this will chemically remove chloride ions because the silver ions will bind to the chloride ions and the, the chloride ions will precipitate out. So effectively what we are doing is while we're not taking chloride of the, the reactant physically out of the test tube, but because the chloride is no longer aqueous, it's precipitated as a solid silver chloride, we're effectively removing the reactant from the aqueous equilibrium system. So let's take a look and see what happens. We're going to add silver nitrate to both test tubes. And we see the white that is happening. The white is the silver chloride precipitate. And you can see here that when we shake it and mix things up thoroughly, you can see that the blue has greatly diminished. Uh, it's not gone entirely, but we have definitely, by removing this reactant, the chloride, we are uh, making more uh, reactants because removing a reactant is going to produce more reactants. So, what is the color change after adding the silver nitrate? It turned pink. We say that that's favoring the reactant ion, the cobalt hexahydrate. Uh, we say that this is a shift to the left, and we say that reactants are favored. The stress is the removal of the reactant. The relief is to replace the reactants, and to do that, it has to use up product to make those reactants. So we'll all of a sudden have more reactants present and fewer products present. All right, let's take a look at uh, the next demonstration, which is to change the temperature. So what we're going to do now um, is we're going to put these two test tubes, both a pink one and a blue one. So the pink one has more reactants present than products, and the blue one has more products present than reactants. We're gonna put both into <coughs> excuse me, into a hot water bath. Now to follow what's going to happen uh, when we add heat, we have to add the, uh, the, the heat term into the, into the equation. So uh, this is an endothermic reaction, which means that the heat shows up as being absorbed by the reactants. So we're going to treat adding heat as if we are adding a reactant. So the question here is, um, is the reactant, is the reaction, whoops. Well, let's see, let's look at the video first and then we'll click through this. So we can see here when we put the pink tube into the hot water, it definitely turns it blue. And so this should make sense if we're adding heat, we're adding a reactant, which means it's going to start to make more products. So this reaction is endothermic. We see that because the heat term is on the reactant side. Um, so considering heat's a reactant, we're adding a reactant to the equilibrium system. So the color change after we added the heat was that it definitely turned blue which favors the cobalt chloride ion, and we consider that a shift to the right. <clears throat> now this next demonstration, this is a cool water bath, right? So now what we're doing is when we put that tube that we just took out of the heat, when we put it into an ice bath, as you might predict, it's going to turn the blue solution pink, or certainly less blue. And so as we um, take a little bit longer to cool it down, it's definitely becoming more and more pink. So what we can see here, again, this does not change. It's still an endothermic reaction. Heat is still considered a reactant, but now we are removing that reactant. So the color change after we remove the reactant is it makes more reactants and we consider that a shift to the left. So summarizing, 
when you add a chemical that appears on the right side of the equation, this will shift the equilibrium to the left side of the equation. So you'll need to circle the left side. It's meant for you to choose on your handout. Um, if you add a chemical which appears on the left side of an equation, that will shift the equilibrium to the right side of the equation. Removing or decreasing the concentration of a chemical which appears on the left side will shift the equilibrium to the left side of the equation and removing or decreasing the concentration of a chemical which appears on the right side will shift the equilibrium to the right side of the equation. All right, so uh, at this point, there will be some uh, problems for you to try in your problem set, and you should definitely give those a try. Uh, so uh, in this video, we have learned how to talk about a reversible reaction, having a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. We know that equilibrium is when the forward reaction rate equals the reverse reaction rate. We spent some time talking about Le Chatelier's principle, which says that a stress is a change that leads to disturbance in equilibrium. And the reaction will counteract the stress by either increasing the rate of the reverse reaction or by increasing the rate of the forward reaction until a new equilibrium is reached. That's it for this video lesson. We'll see you back in the classroom.